And so I'm going to work through a quick example just to illustrate how the HP50G calculator can be used to uh, solve Manning's equation when you have a trapezoidal channel geometry. Uh, I previously showed some demos on how to do that using the Casio calculator, so this is just to show you another option that's out there. Um, here's an emulator for the HP50G. It's going to run a little bit faster than the actual calculator will, uh, but not that much differently. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is enter the numerical solver, and you can see that there's these colored function keys. I'm going to use orange 7 to get the numerical solver, and it gives you a variety of different solvers it can do. I'm just going to solve uh, an equation, so OK or Enter. So you can see the soft key here that is OK. Um, I'm here in the equation writer. I'm going to uh, not use what's there already. I'm going to type in a fresh equation from scratch and so I can do orange EQW. So that's the equation writer. And uh, now I start constructing my formula. Now here is Manning's equation. Um, if we combine it a little bit for calculational simplicity, of course we know that the hydraulic radius is area divided by wetted perimeter. And so um, here is area to the 5 thirds power, wetted perimeter to the 2 thirds power. And then here I've expanded out um, how to substitute in uh, the parameters we know for the area, wetted perimeter, as a function of this unknown depth. Um, so there are a number of parameters that are defined in the problem statement, flow of 29, slope 0.1%, side slopes 2.5 units of horizontal distance to every one unit of vertical distance, the base width, and that this is a concrete with an end value of 0.014. So here I've uh, highlighted, or I've identified the variables that are going to go into the solver. So what I need to do is type this equation into the solver and it'll be a little bit clunky because you know I'm um, this isn't a real keyboard but um, let's start that. So alpha gives me access to these uh, letter keys so alpha Q equals that's the orange and the equals alright so uh, B alpha B uh, plus T times Y and now I highlight all of that because I want to multiply it by another Y so I'm just following this function there and I'm gonna highlight all that because I'm taking it to the power of 5 thirds and I'm gonna highlight all that because I'm multiplying it by the slope to the power of 0.5 Okay, so my numerator looks good, I think, and now I need to construct the denominator of that function. So I'm dividing by n times, now I'm going to have to put in a manual parentheses here, I think, so the white gives me access to these parentheses. All right, um, b plus 2 times y um, times... Uh, I'll use another set of parentheses there to start getting this 1 plus t squared. All right, and then that 1 plus t squared, of course, you can see is to the 1 half power. So let me put that in there to the power of 0.5. And now all of that that's inside the brackets is to the 2 thirds power. So it can be a little tricky to highlight all that stuff down in the denominator. Let's see if I can get it right. All right, one more. All right, so that is to the power of two-thirds. And I think I've typed it in. Yeah, it looks good. So I'll just type in enter, and it translates that uh, visual way of creating, uh, of entering the equation to, you know, this line. So if I scroll up to that and I choose edit here, you can see this is kind of the normal way you have to type an equation if it's not being constructed visually. So it, it, it did that translation for me. Um, and now I'll just type in the uh, given values. Uh, for this one, it's 29 is the Q. All right. Uh, the B, the bottom width, is 3.5. And it's remembering values. You know, these values that are in here are from a previous problem, a different problem. So 2.5 is the side slope um, horizontal distance. 
the depth is unknown, so it needs a guess to start with, but it doesn't have to be anything in particular, so I'm just going to leave that incorrect value there and solve for it later. The slope 0 0.001, and finally I need to make sure that my n value is in there. For this one, it's 0 0.014. So 0 0.014. All right. So then I scroll up to the variable I want to solve for. So in this case, I'm going to be solving for the depth. And having previously solved this problem, um, I know that the depth should be 1.66 meters for this one. So we're looking for 1.66 meters. We click Solve. 1.66 meters. Now that's a relief whenever uh, an example actually works out the way that you're hoping it will. Uh, the thing that's kind of cool though, why I like this, is let's say that you went out and you measured and the depth was actually 1.5 meters. So 1.5 meters in this is going to correspond to what flow rate? So now I can solve for the unknown. So if it was 1.5 meters, then that's the depth that goes along with 23.55 cubic meters per second. And so this allows you to kind of iterate and monkey around a little bit, you know, like what if it's back to 29, okay, and we decide to make it a little bit wider, you know, because we didn't like that 1.66 meters. What if we wanted it to be no wider or no deeper than 1.60? So I could increase that width and see, well, what happens if I make the bottom width four? And now I can just solve for that and find out the depth. Oh, okay, that did work out. I'm not going to go over the 1.6 meter limit if I increase the channel width a little. So I hope that gives you a, a little bit of an idea on the uh, HP50 and its ability to uh, solve numerical functions and in particular the Manning's equation. So as always, please feel free to contact me if you have any questions and enjoy Manning's equation.